All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this impromptu video showing you my collection circa April 2022. Um, so my office um, has been in a, a state for a while. I've just been so busy with work, uh, multiple jobs and um, all sorts of other things. I'm sure you've noticed my video upload output has drastically dropped. Um, but, and I've talked about that before, but anyway, so um, one thing that just has been an issue for me is my collection because I've been trying to sell stuff. You may have seen my sale string. Um, you can still contact me, contact me on Twitter. I'll leave that one in for free if, uh, if you want to buy anything and uh, you can check out the stream to see what I am selling. But regardless of that, um, so I've been like pulling a lot of stuff off the shelves, right? So I can stack them up and see what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to sell. And then the process of putting them back onto the shelves. And then also there's just been stuff building up, stuff that I bought. There's been piles here, piles there. Um, this floor being clear is is pretty remarkable at the moment. Um, so it took me hours and hours and <laughs> it's still all unorganized. Well, mostly unorganized, which tweaks, tweaks me the fuck out. Like it genuinely like kind of curls my toes a little bit that all of this is not really in some sort of nice, you know, either aesthetically pleasing or chronologically, um, logical, chronologically logical, um, layout. And then the fact that the, these shelving units are all uneven and some of them have cardboard underneath them and that they, they don't line up properly. And that's bugged me for a while. We've talked about this in the past, but I thought I'd just show you what my collection looks like now in 2022 in the state that it's in, and just to kind of ask you guys, what is your collection set up like? Because when you have a large collection like mine, and mine is, I'd say I have a really big collection for a, a, can I call myself a casual collector? I don't know, but I know there are people out there who have vast collections that just dwarf mine completely, but there's a certain level of collector that, that I'm at, and I think I, I kind of, I certainly overreach. <laughs> so I have a fairly large collection. So for people out there who have this kind of, I think I have maybe, it's between 1,500 and 2,000 Blu-rays, maybe. Um, maybe not even that. Maybe maybe it's more 15, maybe 15, 16, 1,700, something like that. I don't know. But then then it's like, do you count films or do you count single titles? Is one box set and one title? I don't know. It's, it's a fucking lot. Either way. Um, what do you guys do? How is your collection set up? Do you have problems with space? I know Graham at Man V Film who's been doing a lot of Blu-ray related, uh, Blu-ray collecting related videos. He's been kind of chronicling his, uh, chronicling, chronicling his um, kind of journey of being a collector and the kind of pitfalls and the, the agonizing moments and space is an issue. Space is an issue for me. Um, I feel like I could put a couple more of these units in my bedroom. There's space for that. My bedroom is fucking massive and it's all kind of a waste of space. But then I just think, <sighs> <laughs> I'm recalled to Breaking Bad. How much is enough? How big does this collection need to be? And all along with the journey of um, conquering my collection, you know, the amount of films I haven't seen in my collection is still so ridiculous that um, I'm really trying to, you know, do better. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to show you what what what's what and where most of my films are and so on and so forth. And the fact that almost everything is off the floor is is at least something of a, a weight off my my mind. So, um, yeah, most of the room is a tip. Well, not really most of it, but there's like, there's kind of like that corner is just... Do you ever have a corner where you just chuck shit you just can't be bothered dealing with right now and it stays there forever? And then the, there's all that stuff as well and uh, it's a bit of a mess. But at least this side of the room looks a little bit more neat. Um, so up here we have the, the premium collection completely out of order. But I do like myself a good premium collection. These are motherfuckers when they're two for fifteen pounds because it's just so easy to grab so many of them. Um, but this is where you get into like really like Alan Partridge, Zodiac, <laughs> imprint release of the gift, Sorcerer, Studio Canal of uh, Kind Hearts and Coronets, some Digibooks. 
um, arrow video completely out of order uh, <laughs> more arrow video box sets i have a lot of arrow video well i say that i know some people have huge arrow video collections but considering i'm not a big arrow video guy per se even though i think they are perhaps the best um boutique label in the world right now um it's surprising to me that i have that many random steelbooks some uh, artificial eye stuff completely random mix there just makes no sense whatsoever same down there and then also the old sony collector's editions which i would credit and um <laughs> indict with uh as being like the, the the kind of the line that kind of really threw me off the deep end in terms of collecting things that are numbered so i collected all of these because they're numbered and they're all out of order <laughs> I don't think there's even a single sequentially um, um, sequence there. 18, 1, 10, 17, 26, 13, 3, 16, 16. Of course, I have Grand Dog Day twice because you just have to. Uh, Dash Boats, uh, which is 8, 5, 11, 19, 9, 4, 2, 15, 12, 7, 14. It literally is probably, that's the most out of order it could possibly be. The only thing that is really in order here is the the MOC collection. So we go from spine number one um, all the way down to um, the most recent releases, which I actually don't have. There's, I think, two the two most recent ones I don't have, um, but other, otherwise everything else is here, uh, down to spine number 259, The Love of Jeannie Nay, and then some other Eureka releases. Uh, the, the Harry Housen box sets, more random special editions there. But uh, I will, of course, grab the um, the most recent Eureka Masters of Cinema stuff. I was going to put, like, all my, like, kind of franchise box sets along here. But I, d I just don't trust this. They're not attached to the wall, you know? And I'm a bit edgy about it. But also... This ain't level with with this one, <laughs> so it just wouldn't look as I don't know. It's it's tough. It's tricky. Um, this is the 4K section. Again, entirely out of order. I say entirely. We got the Spider-Man trilogy together. We got the Star Wars films together, but you know, we're mostly out of order. Um, some anime stuff. That's the entirety of Makoto Shinkai's filmography. Uh, Mamoru Hosoda, the, the Studio Ghibli collection. Um, I have all of them. Not every single variant, but every film is accounted for there. Um, some digi books. Uh, my Jackie Chan collection, which is massive now, thanks to 88 Films. Uh, some Shaw Brothers stuff, random bits and pieces. Um, John Carpenter's entire filmography, out of order. <laughs> but all of his directed films are there. One thing I really dislike about this is that <laughs> I went to such great pains to collect every film John Carpenter's made, and it just couldn't look more um, uneven. <laughs> there are slim cases, there are thick cases, there are blue cases, there are clear cases, there are Criterion style cases, there are steel books, there are digi books, <laughs> there are box sets. It's just, <laughs> I just like a nice fucking clean. Everyone the same. I'm almost toying with the idea of making my own, like, custom sleeve collection or something. Um, we got the Buster Keatons there, and uh, all the Tarantino steelbooks, bar his last film. Some more random steelbooks there at the bottom. Um, and then up here is just junk that's been dumped. All my Disneys are in the back underneath there. These are just box sets that have been slapped on the edge. They're actually hanging off a little bit, but... I should be fine. It's literally just like whatever can be thrown over here to get off the floor, basically. It just it looks nicer than just being stacked up on the floor. Uh, this is kind of the, uh, we'll call this the culture shelf in honor of uh, Ian over at Forkable. If he's even still going, I don't know. So I got my Criterions and I just randomly jammed in uh, my movies, which I'm starting to collect. I'll make a video about that at some point soon. Criterions. Director box sets, world cinema stuff, um, BFI collection down there, um, more big director box sets and other things there, collections, and, and these I wish I could display better, but I just 
can't at the minute. Um, some other director stuff. We got uh, Satoshi Kon, um, my Hirokazu Koreeda um, section. All jumbled up there, makes no sense whatsoever. The Twin Peaks stuff, more random bits and pieces, a few Star Wars things, not really in any order. Junk in the floor, PS4 games, DVDs, a few things thrown up here just to make this look a little bit nicer. Um, these are the ones I'm selling, that's another pile that I'm selling. Um, my Marvel Steelbooks are just there at the moment. I don't. I want to do something with them, but I don't know what. And then finally, we have this um, this wonderful unit, which I assembled backwards. <laughs> See the wood chip facing out. <sighs> um, these are double backed, so there are many, many Blu-rays on the shelf. Um, and then a few of the oversized things here. These are mostly books, but we have the Kiki's thirtieth anniversary Blu-ray, uh, my Rush collection of Blu-rays. The Gamera set, and then of course the Godzilla. So that is pretty much it. Um, this is um, this is my my tray paces special. This is my pawn collection, which I keep hidden at all times. Um, there's probably about um, two thousand um, pawn films on Blu-ray there. Anyway, so there we go. That's the collection. Hope you're all doing well. Um, but yeah, how do you organize your shit? Um, cause I, I don't even know where to continue at this point. Cause I've definitely started, but well, I just ran out of, um, filming there and carried on for an extra two minutes. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I've definitely started. I just don't know where to go from there. And I was pointing out that because this house is so uneven in terms of the way it's been constructed many, many years ago, I would assume, um, considering that my grandfather was born on this street, um, a few houses down, um, this, it does not go flush against the wall. You put it straight down on the floor and, and this is how big the gap is. I can fit my whole hand in there. It's ridiculous. Uh, and especially when it comes to this shorter unit, uh, or slimmer unit, which is not as deep. And so that one itself is like <laughs> fucking nuts. So this needs to be affixed to the wall, which they recommend you do anyway, I know, but anyway, I will, um, I will self-edit myself from earlier and not ramble on anymore. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you at some point with the next video. Hey, <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause... <laughs>